I'm Keith Gerslant. I'm Ann Charles. I'm Linda Quinlan. And I'd like to welcome you to All Things LGBTQ. It is August 14th, Tuesday, and welcome. Now we're going to start it with headlines. <laughs> I was going to say, and then you turn and look at the rest of us. So it's primary day. While we're taping, you will already have had the results when you see this. Did you vote? Who'd you vote for? What are the things that we should really be looking at coming out of this primary? Sunday, August 12th, did you know it was Gay <laughs> Uncle Day? Not too late to send a card. Toronto, hate graffiti in the village. Not to be outdone, Morrisville, Vermont. Hey, graffiti at their high school. Changes at the Pride Center of Vermont. And we have a list. Since 2015, 87% of the homicides of people who identify as transgender have been misgendered and misnamed. Little conversation about that. And sort of moving on in that same vein, that same issue, there may be some problems coming up with the midterm elections in eight states in particular where transgender people may find some really difficult difficulties being allowed to vote. And coming out of both state and federal courts recently, there's some problem with our non-discrimination statutes mm -hmm. and people who are not being covered in this week's trivia question, and there's a trick to it, Out in the Mountains, August 2000 edition, front page, lead story, lovely photograph, the photographs of Carolyn Conrad, K.P. Peterson, and T. Hunter Wilson. What did they do to get on the cover? We will see. <laughs> Well, I have an update on the Pakistani election. <laughs> Not only do I have the date, I have the outcome. All so right. Ooh. I'd like to talk about Costa Rica and its decision about same-sex marriage and the implications of that. Turkey boycotts the Eurovision Song Contest over LGBT performers. I have news from Israel. Armenian LGBTQ Activists are attacked by a homophobic mob. Protesters gather in Japan to decry a lawmaker's LGBTQ productivity claim. Then I have some stories I'm not going to get to, but that I have pictures. I'd like to show you a picture of around 50,000 people attending the Belfast Pride. All right. It's the biggest turnout since the LGBT march began 25 years ago. I thought you were going to say it was the last Rainbow Umbrella 802 event. <laughs> <laughs> um, sad story from Hong Kong. A pop star, a lesbian pop star, Ellen Joyce Liu, dies in a fall from her apartment building. She was bipolar, 32. Mm -hmm. uh, there's huge mourning occurring in Japan, Japan among most, well, among the general population, but a lot with young lesbians who are uh, walking by her casket holding hands and so forth. Um, and the last story I have a picture for, I have a picture of Ellen Joyce Liu and also of a Russian LGBT activist who is being detained during a St. Petersburg rally. I mean, what courage to have an LGBT rally in St. Petersburg? And the police arrested 25 people uh, and single them out according to the flamboyance or the colorfulness of their presentation. So you see a picture of someone being carried along in a rainbow flag being arrested. That so takes so much courage to I know it is I, I don't think I'm going to be going to St. Petersburg. No. no, and we were just talking about that. Do not visit St. Petersburg. Or other LGBTQ places that, you know. Are no. very anti-LGBTQ. Right. Right. And lots of lots of us do, unfortunately. And in our community. Should, in our community, and they shouldn't be getting our money. No. So. Here, here. Here, here. Okay, I have a, I have a few stories. One is about the human rights campaign. 
uh, there were on se sessions anti-LGBT religious liberty task force. Mm -hmm. um, there is a rainbow uh, wave of elections. Um, and also, um, uh, Rosie O'Donnell on Broadway and Broadway stars sing songs of angry men at the White House. More than 50 Broadway performers from the cast of Hamilton, Wicked, Beautiful, SpongeBob, SpongeBob SquarePants, among others, come to show the support for protesters who have been there every day. So there's a picture of Rosie O'Donnell up there. Um, another human rights campaign story. Um, uh, law enforcement agencies will not ma march in Madison, Wisconsin's Pride Parade. Um, they don't want them. They have. Mm -hmm. a, they don't want them coming wearing guns and carrying in equipment uniform. and uniform. So that's interesting. Adults plot a hate crime against a 12-year-old. Ruby Rose is cast as the famed DC Comics character Batwoman. Rose identifies as a lesbian and will be the first openly gay hero to headline a series. Rose gained stardom when she was cast in the season three of Orange is the New Black. Um, she deleted her Twitter, however, because she got so much criticism uh, and that she, saying she wasn't lesbian enough. Twitter. <laughs> she deleted her Twitter. Right. Not lesbian enough. Atlanta landscaper designer denied service to gay couple. LGBTQ millennials, millennials are most likely to re-enter the closet once hired on their first job. Yeah. And there's anger over a Disney actor playing a gay character. So. We'll have more a on gay that. couple Who's meeting not a gay? landscaper. Isn't huh? there something wrong with just the symmetry of that? Yeah. <laughs> Wait till you hear what he said. I oh, know. I, uh, all right. So okay. Since Linda didn't include it in her celebrity trash, and I know oh. all of you girls out there are waiting to hear this, Dancing Queen shares cover of ABBA oh. is oh, being I released September twenty eighth. Mark it on your calendars. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait. I cannot wait. So while we're filming this, the primary is ongoing, and there's a number of things that we really need to be looking at. And, of course, in the forum, forefront is Christian Hallquist's bid for the gubernatorial Democratic Party. If she wins, or when she wins, what's the margin of victory? because that will be very telling about support and momentum going into the general election. Also of note... What do you think has to be a good percentage, like like 10%? 15. 15? Yeah. Also, it should be noted that Christine returned $16,000 that she had received in corporate donations, saying that this needs to be a people-supported, people's-funded campaign. Good. The other thing to look at on the Democratic side is how many write-in votes John Rogers gets. Now, John Rogers is the, the state senator from Essex Orleans counties that is a write-in gubernatorial gun rights advocate. And this flushes in with looking at what happens on the Republican side. You know, what percentage of the primary vote does Keith Stearns get on the Republican ticket? the Vermont Federation of Gun Owners, Gun Rights Associations said that they were going to get out the vote for this primary to send a message to Phil Scott. So it will be very telling what percentage of the vote he gets, what that really tells us about the momentum coming from the conservative right. Um, and then we really need to be watching Phil Scott, the Republican Governors Association has already given him a million dollars. Yeah. He's spent over $260,000, or the, the Republican Governors Association has already spent $261,000 for the primary. They're putting a lot of money and push behind him, which kind of is interesting because he's the Republican governor who's not following the pack. 
Like if, if there's one who's to be they ever had that picture cooperating with Democrats. Right. <laughs> and the New York Times yes. cover Saturday. And then the other thing to look at is what was the voter turnout? Um, some of the predictions coming from the political pundits is that it would probably be low because it's the primary. It's an odd date. There are some Vermonters who are like, we have a primary, but when is it? And see what that tells us about what might be happening for midterms. And then looking at what happens with the balance in the Vermont legislature. So I'll leave it at that for now. All right, let's go to Pakistan. Where yeah, I but, we really, but we really, but we really don't want to do it. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's one of those countries on the list of yeah. don't go. I know it's a bad scene too with the elections. First of all, the elections occurred back in July 25th, so I was a little <laughs> delayed Oops. in my reporting of the. There, I mean, there were still 13 transgender candidates, four of whom. Um, people, were, the media was focusing on um, what happened was pushback. Um, five gender transgender candidates failed to win office. Transgender observers and voters were blocked from polling stations. Campaigners said, um, while Pakistan is deeply conservative and homosexuality is illegal. The country has approved laws giving transgender people better rights than in many other nations, including issuing its first passport with the transgender category last year. However, transgender turnout remained low and observers faced difficult work environments, which all, all the All Pakistan Transgender Election Network blamed on the Election Commission's Failure to, failure to understand the unique obstacles. Transgender observer Farzana Riaz said no transgender people were allowed to vote in Khyber Pakhuntwa, one of Pakistan's four provinces, where there was a spate of transgender attacks in 2016 because their identity cards did not match the gender they presented as, which is what Keith's gonna talk about right. a little later. Uh, transgender rights became prominent in Pakistan in 2020, 2009 when the Supreme Court ruled that transgender people could get national trans identity cards as a third sex. Uh, it was counted in the national census last year, recording 10,418 in a population wow. about, of about 207 million. People say that was pretty low because uh, Transaction Pakistan estimates there are at least half a million transgender people in the country. Yeah. So it wasn't a good outcome, this election, yeah. but it's progress, I guess. Even people. if they got their, like if they got their IDs with the X on it, they still couldn't? They could have. I don't know if the candidates would have been elected, but they at least, you know, transgender voters would have had a voice. Yeah. So. But, but then you would have to have gone through the process to have gotten the X designation, and and how cumbersome a process is that? Right, you right. Know, it, my guess is that it's probably something that they're not making terribly easy to facilitate, mm -hmm. and they may be putting some additional cost on this that is prohibitive People can't as well. Afford, yeah. yeah, and it's one more thing. Even though a law may have been passed, execution yeah. is everything. So let's talk about laws in Costa Rica, where the Supreme Court has gone along with marriage equality, uh, but given it to the Legislative Assembly to set the groundwork for. So um, activists are kind of angry because they ruled for same-sex marriage, but are delaying the implementation for 18 months and passing it to the legislature. So one step forward, one step back. Uh, let's talk about Turkey, if we may. Um, they have withdrawn from the... I was, was going to say, you have not said nice things about Turkey in the past. I know, and it's bad. <laughs> it's not participated, it, right now it's not participating in the longest running annual TV music competition since 2012. Um, this is what they say. As a public broadcaster, this is the network, radio, Turkish radio and television, as a public broadcaster, we cannot broadcast live at 9 p.m. when children are watching. 
an Austrian with a beard and a skirt. And I wanted to show her picture. It's Conchita Wurst, but I couldn't, I couldn't get it for the, this program. But anyway, Conchita, uh, who claims not to have a gender and says, I am a man and a woman at the same time, this public, um, not public broadcasting, the TV broadcasting station said, Turkey would return to the contest once this confusion in mentality is corrected, he says. Um, it's a chain of events, London-based journalists told the Thomson Reuters Foundation. First, they banned Pride in 2015, then the film festival in Ankara, and now Eurovision. It's an attempt to erase the LGBT community within Turkey. Despite le legalizing gay sex, a sex in 1858 so under the Ottoman Empire, modern day <laughs> Turkey, Turkey restricts gay rights. Same sex marriages are not recognized and lesbians do not have access to in vitro fertilization. In July this year, Tur Turkish riot police used tear gas and rubber bullets against activists who assembled in the capital in protest, which is Istanbul, in protest of the gay pride ban. So more bad news from Turkey. May I continue to the tumult in Israel? Well, I think we should return to that. All right. Okay. We, back we need to build up our strength. I know. <laughs> right. I'm drinking coffee. That's, that's There we go. Yeah. Some people say it's tumult, but I've always said tumult. Huh. Okay. <laughs> The human rights campaign is at war after Sessions Anti-LGBTQ Religious Liberty Task Force, which we talked about a little bit last yeah. week. And our tax dollars are paying for this, as we know. And it's attempting to give, the, uh, give religion the ability to discriminate against LGBTQ people with the support of the Trump-Pence administration. Mike Pence, as we know, is the poster boy for religious-based discrimination. The HRC has, summoned, has submitted a Freedom of Information Act uh, request to the Department of Justice for all the records associating yeah. with this new task force. So it'll be interesting to see, A, whether they get it, and B, what's in it. Or they may say, you know, it's uh, security blocked or who knows what, but we'll, we'll more on that later. Who are the hate groups that were supplying them with information and language yeah. and, money. Pro and pro yeah, process? Yeah. Oh, our money's paying for this. Oh, I see. <laughs> tax dollars. Yeah. That work. Tax dollars. Our tax so dollars. So take a personal work. check. <laughs> <laughs> There's a rainbow wave, apparently. In 2018, there are... More LGBTQ candidates than ever before. Yes. Sharice Davis of Kansas is a lesbian Native American. In all, there are 400 LGBTQ candidates this year and most are Democrats. Half are running for state offices. In 2017, more than 120 uh, can be described as, in, in 2017, more than 120 measures. Uh, were described as anti-LGBTQ yeah. and were introduced across 30 states. So we're making progress there. 400, that's a good uh, amount. When we get to the midterms, we'll have to track how many got elected. Yeah. And, you know, how many of the anti-pieces were actually enacted. But the, the, the part we keep missing is there's a lot of pro-LGBTQ legislation that's happening. So right, and you've th talked about that. That social change good. is still happening. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, the Human Rights Campaign announces its largest grassroots expansion in history, opens an offensive against Trump and Pence agenda, HRC rising, the new campaign to resist politics of hate, fight and fight anti-LGBTQ registration, fuel pro-equality candidates, and they have a war chest now of $26 million. That's where your personal check should yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> so fight on, right? right. Absolutely. Uh, a DC church encourages shaming and shunning LGBTQ people as lowly Christians. There we go. Love Capital View Baptist Church has written 
this discrimination into their constitution. So, and Don Lemon's new sh uh, new show host for CNN uh, said that Trump told him he couldn't be a good journalist because he is black and racist. Who's racist? Don Lemon? Yeah. Trump said, uh, <laughs> yeah. what a, mm, that whole thing with Don oh, Lemon and LeBron James. I know. Craziness. So I think I will, I will leave the rest of these stories for the next time. So let's <laughs> move to our Tor local news. Toronto. Okay. Yeah. One of the things that happened in Toronto, and it was in the Gay Village, which is a very specific area within downtown. In the middle of day, somebody went and painted swastikas on the rainbow crosswalk. Mm. And the Neighborhood Association Isn't realized there what- Isn't cameras? Okay. Police are looking for two individuals in particular. Okay. But hooded and concealed and sort of, but one of the positive things is the community looked at this is what happened and immediately moved in to clean it up. So that even though someone had defaced, they removed the, the hate graffiti. Unfortunately, it also happened at People's Academy, which is the high school in Morrisville, Vermont. And again, they have grainy images of youth who they think are between 10 and 12 years old who were painting swastikas and MS-13 gang symbols. And as will be coming up in Linda's interview later on in the show, this is the age group that we really should be focusing on and we really haven't. Yeah. This is where all of those messages really get embedded. And, and it's, it's what they accept as the norm before there's anything to challenge it. And you know, the, there's nothing to challenge maybe what their parents are telling them too. Right. Yeah. And this would at least give some other perspective on hate. Well, and, and being able to have a direct conversation rather than just hearing these little side conversations or slurs yeah a direct conversation with them about the value and worth of individuals mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. pride center of vermont multiple staff changes happening the most significant of which is they've hired an executive director which is mike benzel who has been their their director of their health and wellness program and who was actually one of the founders of the Pride Center of Vermont. And he's actually gonna be our guest on our next show. So what I wanna encourage you, and Rachel, you could send me an email. <laughs> if you have questions for Mike coming into this new role, what would you like us to ask him? The three of us attended the community forum and there was a wealth of questions. Mm -hmm. about the Pride Center and the year that they Direction. just gone through, where do they want to go, how are they going to assess needs, and where are the services for women and those of us who are aging? Really quickly, this is going to be my last story. Transgender, misidentified by mm -hmm. law enforcement. Mm -hmm. and, 80, and the statistic that came out was that 87% of the homicides, the victim, the individual who identified as transgender, was misgendered, misnamed. And there was some conversation about how that occurred. You know, law enforcement were not listening. And it really impedes the investigation because if you know me as Kathy, but your law enforcement and going to talk to everybody and referencing Keith, they're not going to know who you're talking about. And, and law enforcement is not going to get the information they right. need. However, the other piece that was embedded in the story, the police were going by the official identification that the person was holding. So we also need to be looking at what are the difficulties that we're putting in place for someone who identifies as chan transgender, gets official documents and ID that truly represents their gender identity? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That clearly identifies, you know, who they are. Yeah. And that folds into what you were talking about with Pakistan and with the eight states with the upcoming midterms, 
Alabama, Georgia, Indiana, Kansas, Mississippi, Tennessee, Virginia, and Wisconsin, all progressive strongholds, <laughs> have voter registration, have voter suspects. guidelines, yeah, voter guidelines that you need a government issued ID. So if someone who identifies as transgender goes up to somebody at one of the polls and your driver's license doesn't match the person in front of you, you may be denied the right to vote. So it's not just Pakistan, it's mm -hmm. us. And the other mm -hmm. thing is that, you know, I, Ann and I lived in Wisconsin in the 70s, 80s, mm -hmm. in the 80s. And I was registering my son who had turned to 18. And in Wisconsin, you could walk in on voting day with an ID and vote that very day. With an ID? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But now... That was before Scott Walker. That was and before, way brothers. before Scott Walker. Yeah. So I hope, I hope Wisconsin has a blue wave this time because we want to keep Tammy. Oh, yes. We want to keep Tammy. It's so. her primary today. Yeah. Yeah. So let's hope. We'll get an indication. Yeah. yeah. It'll be a yeah. late night for some of us. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, Ann. So okay. now you want to take us to Israel. I do. And because remember last time I spoke of the vote in the Knesset that expanded a access to child sur surrogacy for single women yeah. who were until now prohibited from surrogacy services, but at the same time, it failed to give single men the same right, thereby precluding, excluding gay men from the yeah. process. So, uh, 200 rabbis signed from Israel signed a petition, an anti-LGBT letter, um, In with enshrining discrimination, applauding the uh, legislation, um, yes. saying bad things. So now another 575 rabbis from around the world <laughs> have responded, uh, called on the first people who wrote the letter uh, to retract their comments, uh, saying that their words could lead to violence against gays, like the murder of Shiri Banki at the Jerusalem Pride Parade in 2015. Three years ago at Jerusalem Pride, Shiri Banki was brutally murdered by a man claiming the act in the name of the Torah. We all can agree, they, these uh, 575 rabbis said, that hatred, violence, and murder are in fact nothing short of Chilul Hashem, a desecration of God's name. We must similarly recognize that the recent rabbinic letter, as well as recent legislation, reflect a dehumanizing mindset that could, God forbid, lead to more tragedies like Shira's murder in the future. The rabbis also called on Israel's leaders to reiterate the separation of religion and state as an ideal of democracy. And these and rabbis were all outside of Israel? Most of them, okay. that's 575. Yeah. Um, but now Israel has the LGBT activists in Israel have formed a new political party. So that's a sort of a cheerful. Uh, a lot of parties like, say, like saying they promote gay rights, but we can better run our struggles by ourselves. Straight people can't really represent us. It's time to have our own representatives. So this is the founding meeting of a new party solely dedicated to serving the LGBT Community will be held on Tuesday in Tel Aviv. And they have a parliamentary government, don't they? Mm -hmm. So they can have like, well, I mean, we could too, but they have like 40 parties or something, don't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. But the, so there are three major ones. Yeah. We have had gay caucuses and lobbying in the Knesset, but they have not been proven effective, uh, said one of the founders of this party. We've also had gay MKs in Meretz, the Zionist Union and the Likud, the three major parties, but that was not effective either because their obligations are to their party more than to our community. We need a party that puts its focus on creating change and advancing our interests in Israeli politics. Huh. So that's an interesting development yeah. in Israel. Yeah. Um, is there time for one, one more story? Short story, if All you right. have it. Let's, I have a picture. Short story, O. Henry. <laughs> <laughs> I have a picture of protesters gathering in Japan to decry, decry the Liberal Democratic Party lawmakers' comment 
on LGBT productivity. This is liberal going Democrats on. Did well, that? liberal. That's the name of the party. But it's not necessarily. Well, the liberal his, his name is Mio Shugita, and he is a member of the House of Representatives. He's faced a barrage of criticism after writing um, in an article contributed to a monthly magazine that sexual minorities, including members of the LGBT community, do not bear children and therefore are not productive. <laughs> Several hundreds of participants gathered in response to calls on social media platforms like, it, like Twitter. Uh, at the gathering, Fuyuka Kainai, a 29-year-old illustrator who identifies as gay, said, even when I experienced discrimination, I continued to keep silent. But if we don't speak out now, this will only continue. We must create a society where the next generation does not have to experience the same pain as we did. There is discrimination in Japan. Nakosi Suzuki, a 22-year-old lesbian, called out to passers-by while holding a rainbow flag, a representation of sexual diversity. Lend us a helping hand to change society. Let us change society together. So there's yeah. been a big uproar in Japan over this remark, and it's a bad thing to say. It is bad, but yeah. you know the uh, response has been overwhelming. And so maybe there'll be a follow-up about uh, you know how this impacted him. Well, they want him out of office. Yeah, I'm ready for him to go. Although I'm not a voting <laughs> she member. She stands in front of the mirror and practices the pronunciation. Of the <laughs> she names, must. She? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't tell you about I, that. either that no. or she's got us totally fooled. Yep, I, she's pretty good. Well, I do practice. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let me tell you about uh, <laughs> Linda. Tell us <laughs> what, what anger over Disney actor playing a gay oh. character in Jungle Cruise. This is an upcoming film starring Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt. Jack Whitehall, thirty, who is British, um, and he's going to be playing a gay man. Who is usually who is usually very effeminate, very flamboyant, and um, a dandy. very camp, and very funny, and so there's a lot of pushback about that because they think that it should have been given to a gay actor. Okay, and part of the the, the pushback is they really want to develop a series. Yeah, based yeah. on this, it's, it's not a series. Just, it's, right. not it's not just, just a one, one time. time. It's an ongoing. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So they want a gay actor. Um, and Ruby Rose is cast as the famed DC comic character Batman. Uh, as I said, she was in um, Batman. Batwoman. Okay. <laughs> I thought we was we were making a I little know. more progress than we probably <laughs> are. Um, but she's gotten a lot of hate mail on um, Twitter by uh, our own community, um, yeah. saying that she's just not lesbian enough, and um, she describes herself as gender fluid. So we'll see what happens there. Why is she not lesbian enough? Because she's gender fluid? Or? Well, no, because she's, well, some of it was because she's white and because she's young and because she's not butch enough. I'm not butch enough. Yeah. Ooh. So. I've known some young white femme lesbians. I, okay. Yeah. Can't we all get along? Right. <laughs> to coin a phrase. Yeah. Well, why can't we all get along? No. <laughs> Adults plot a hate crime against a 12-year-old. This was uh, a series of screenshots show that there was an attempt being plotted to alienate, harass, and discriminate against a girl who was transgender and anyone who was like her. Bernie Crenshaw appears to be the ringleader of this anti-trans attack. The bully student's mother filed a restraining order against him. Crenshaw was convicted of, of domestic abuse and convicted in 2016. The charges were later dismissed following a deferred sentence. Crenshaw's wife, Jamie, posted on the, I think it's Achille, Oklahoma, ISO parent group, heads up all you parents out there, Beware of the 5th through 7th grade girls. This transgender 
is already using the girls' bathroom. Hmm. So, and um, see, I, th I think that is hate speech yeah. because the intent is to harass, intimidate. Exactly. Um, you know, it's not so like some of the conversation in, in the interview that is coming up. Yes, we talk about, about that. You know, freedom of speech and. When is it really not protected speech? When is the intent to create a degree of hate and discrimination against an individual? Mm -hmm. I know, because what if someone had picked up on this and then, you know, really hurt this young person or something, that it would they be initiated might. by this. Yeah. So, and there's a, a landscape designer denies service to gay couple because their marriage is a perverse, foolish delusion. <sighs> Colton, really? Mm. I know, of Sandy Springs, Georgia, wrote a review of the company on Yelp after experiencing the denial. The owner, Danino, responded that when doing a large landscaping project, you have to work around the people who you're doing the project for. Sometimes it takes several months. And he just couldn't do that. He said, all the while going along with the delusion of two men calling themselves married couple, with one man referring to the other man as his husband. It's perverse and foolish and needs to be called for what it is. So, so what happened? Was he sued? or? Georgia does not have non-discrimination yeah. statutes, so there's nothing against which to file suit. Oh. Um, you know, he put it on Yelp. Uh, with, it's got national I don't know attention. What, I don't know what good that'll I'm do. Not I'm not even sure there are any local ordinances in Georgia that extends yeah. mm -hmm. non-discrimination protection. Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta maybe, maybe, but, the, but who knows? This is happening. Atlanta is yeah. not Georgia. No, well. the same as New Orleans is not Louisiana. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but. You know, maybe they have a law there. I don't know. I don't know whether they'll carry this further, but if I hear anything, Let you'll be the know. first to know. <laughs> we may need to take our shovels and head south. And what? Take our shovels and head south. Okay. We've got some landscaping to do. Okay, <laughs> I'll bring my picket placard. So I think that is all I have here for now um, on the national scene. I have a brief comment. Okay. And it's a conversation we're going to extend over dinner and maybe on a future show. And it's, you know, during our last show, yeah. talking about the AARP survey and the percentage of gay men who were single. And Anne spoke up and said there's nothing wrong with being single, which there isn't. However, what AARP was looking at was as we age... Who's going to be taking care of us? Who, and taking care of us in the sense of standing up, being our advocates, ensuring that our rights are protected, that we're, we're not, not subject harassed. to exploitation or abuse or whatever. So and that, doctors are seeing us. And, exactly. Yeah. So that was the direction that the survey try, was trying to give results. And my conversation before we started taping is, dur during the hippie days, we started creating intentional communities. The, the communes that Vermont was very well named for where we took care of each other. Maybe it's time we start doing that as the aging LGBTQ communities and create intentional families and intentional communities so that there is no stigma about first and foremost being single. And secondly, we know we're not in this alone. Mm -hmm. That, yeah. that, that there's someone there to speak up for us. A worthy so. goal. And I think, you it's know. It's going to be interesting dinner. I don't, you know, I, th I think, though, that, f in my opinion, I think they have to be, like, city-based as opposed to country-based because of. I can see us having a farm. Who's going to drive the tractor? <laughs> I. You. <laughs> Linda drives As it. might surprise some people, I know how to drive a tractor, and I actually know how to drive a bulldozer. Yeah. So. Well, I kind of. Well, maybe they can, you know, occur one in the city, everywhere. One in the country. Yeah. yeah. 
or and we several. can visit. We'll I have wanna... our shuttle service back and forth. <laughs> so our trivia question before we just totally disintegrate into silliness. <laughs> the interview. Oh, I'm oh I'm sorry. Oh, That's right. Okay. Yes. We always forget the interview and they're very And important. I've referenced it yeah. numerous times already. And this is Let's a good do one. it. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm doing an interview with Mara Iverson and she is a working member of Outright Vermont, so I hope you enjoy the interview. Hi. Hello. How are you? This is Mara Iverson, and she is from Outright Vermont, right? Uh, that I am. Yep. And uh, last time I saw you, you were in a beautiful outfit, guarding yeah. drinks. My yeah. drink. <laughs> yes, I was. I was, I believe I was wearing a, a flower pinwheel yeah. on my back, and because we each got assigned a color of the rainbow, and I got assigned purple, and I committed. You did it. So. It was beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So you went to school in Pennsylvania, I see. B-A-N-M-A. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Are you from there? Are you a local Pennsylvania I girl? I am. I'm from the Pittsburgh area, which means that um, I am required by law to enjoy the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh-huh. Um, and oh dear we have trouble now <laughs> <laughs> and then i'm also required by law to dislike the new england patriots so sorry, exactly Tom Brady. i yeah. know yeah and they uh, beat us one year i believe yeah but the other twenty five thousand years <laughs> the patriots i know <laughs> i know and so i see that you studied like student affairs for your ma right mm -hmm. so tell us what is student i mean what is student affairs how you know, how do you study for that? What goes into that kind that of program? Is a super good question. Um, so, the reason I got into student affairs in the first place was I was in nearing the end of college, and my girlfriend was still in school, and I was supposed to be graduating, <laughs> and I was like, mm, I don't really want to leave her, but I said, like, no, I've got other stuff I've got to do. Um, and so I was like, you know what I'm really good at? I'm good at being in college. Mm -hmm. I'm really great at being in college, but that costs <laughs> money to do forever. But student affairs and higher education is all of the staff positions that do student support at universities and colleges. So it's residence life and it's the people who do admissions. It's Disability. The, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, multicultural mm -hmm. LGBT resource centers, which is what I originally wanted to mm -hmm. do. Um, and then I ended up doing a stint in study abroad because it's easier to get jobs in the international field <laughs> yeah. than in the LGBT <laughs> field. But, so, yeah. you, but you kind of did get into the LGBTQ field quite deeply, actually. And um, so I was reading on your resume that you did a class at Norwich which for people who might not know, that's a military school, right? It is, yes. And how did that work out? Did you get a lot of pushback or it was pretty good or? Well, that's a good question. So the, the first school that I worked at was Texas A&M. Okay. And Texas A&M and Norwich University are both um, designated as senior military colleges. Uh -huh. There are only six of them in the country. Um, so I had my first experience working at a school that had a Corps of Cadets and a military presence at Texas A&M. So I sort of had practiced mm -hmm. for being at Norwich. Um, and Norwich is a really, really fascinating place. Like it's got um, almost 200 years of tradition coming mm -hmm. up next year. And they're always tr kind of trying out new things. Um, but there's also a culture that is really steeped in valuing tradition. Mm -hmm. And so it makes for an environment where sometimes they're, they're pushing at the edges of things and sometimes they're lagging a little behind. And um, I, that was one of the things that was interesting working there was I was like, you don't have a safe zone or a club. Aside from, like, the, at the time that I was there for a while, the Allies Club was defunct. And when was this? Because this was probably before the push on transgender in the military, I'm assuming. Yeah, so I got to Norwich in 2014, and I just left um, at the very, very start of 2018. I was at Outright, so. Yeah. Yeah, the transgender in the military, like, the push for inclusion and then the I, Trump fallout <laughs> yeah. all <laughs> happened, and you know, that same Norwich time period. And 
what I found was that um, a lot of people in the Corps of Cadets, like a lot of the staff, were willing to have conversations about how to make things, um, how to make things more inclusive, and um, they worked with some of our students who identified as mm -hmm. trans. And two of the students, while I was there, came out, and it was on the front page of the student newspaper, and it went fairly well. I mean, I would not say that it went, you know, perfectly because nothing ever does. Yeah. But um, I was actually really impressed, and I was incredibly proud of those kiddos. Um, and they were yeah. cadets. They were cadets, yeah. Um, I mean, Norwich obviously has a civilian population as well, but yeah. those two um, were uniformed cadets. That's really brave. Yeah, it was cool. And did, did, you, did you hear from them? Did they get any pushback? Were they okay, do you think? I, or? I, they, there was pushback, um, but sometimes, like, it's notoriously hard to prove that pushback that you're getting yeah. is for any particular thing. So, you know, while you may suspect that, like, well, I didn't get the same amount of pushback before I came out, and now the proportion of pushback is higher, <laughs> um, it's, it's so easy to explain away in a hundred different ways. And a lot of kiddos who have the bravery to come out mm -hmm. are people who already kind of are at the margins, and so they're like, I don't have a whole lot of social capital to lose. Mm -hmm. And so when that's the case for students, sometimes they're students who already were having a hard time fitting in. And so it's really easy for people to just be like, but you were always struggling. <laughs> yeah. it, it has nothing to do with this. But it, it definitely did. There were definitely incidents and um, you know things that just were like unkind that happened after the coming out. But mostly what happened was a bunch of support, which I was just so excited by. Yeah, and then if you're on the margins and people come to support you, it just feels so much better, I think. Yeah. Uh, it makes you feel like, okay, you know, I'm glad I did this, you know. Well, I also saw that um, you were in a group at the Unitarian Church dismantling white supremacy. And I just wanted to ask you, like, what kind of tools do you advise people to use to achieve this? And also, I wanted to get your opinion about Antifa and how you feel about their pushback on um, white supremacists and what you feel about that. Well, so the tools you need to dismantle white supremacy are um, the same things you'd need for any, you know, demo work in your household. So, you know, things that you would take down drywall with will also take down <laughs> white supremacy. Um, so go to Lowe's. Um, and if you can't go to Lowe's, um, a good thing to start with is white people recognizing the ways that their skin color actually does play into their everyday lives. Mm -hmm. So my, my particular bent on pretty much everything is education. I mean, it's, it's what I do at Outright. I worked in higher ed. I would have gone to college for eternity if I had been permitted. So I'm very interested in offering people the opportunity to understand something that they didn't know before. So that's very much my approach. Antifa's approach is we don't have time for you all to, to figure it out. Like the problem is 400 years in the making, we gotta go. Yeah. So, or, you know, fascism is, isn't just, you know, racism. It's yeah. all kinds of. So I, I tend to think of it kind of like almost like a, you know, like civil rights era, nonviolent civil disobedience approach, and also a an empowered we will we and justify the means we have to get this done approach. And I, I personally believe that you have to have. I think that it works better when they're together, because I think there are things that some approaches can accomplish that the other approach can't accomplish. And education often takes a long long time yeah it's the long game absolutely <clears throat> and if you're working with people who are um, uh, you know already liberal or progressive this transition is probably much easier I imagine or at least the understanding may be somewhat easier <clears throat> I no. I feel <clears throat> like I feel like it depends sometimes so something that I've run into in Vermont is that sometimes people think that Vermont is already doing such a good job that it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't, we're already at the head. We're at the head yeah. of the pack. There's what could we be even be doing better? Like, 
nothing except for, you know, mandatory compost Patty. collection. <laughs> yeah, so, like, I think in that sense, sometimes it is difficult to convince some Vermonters that we actually have a very, very long way still to go. And there are some very active uh, hate groups in Vermont. Oh, extremely, yeah. The the KKK is um, actively recruiting in the Northeast Kingdom. Like, there are people who receive, you know, pamphlets on their doorsteps. So it's not, this isn't a 1960s problem. It's a 2018, <laughs> your neighbor is getting hate mail problem. Uh-huh. And I know there were some like in um, Middlebury and mm -hmm. I mean some actual organized groups which I was really kind of surprised to hear. I mean I, I, I figured there would be you know hate people who hated and all that but that there were so many organized groups in Vermont I was really surprised. Yeah I, I, rem I also remember around the time that a lot of the fervor around that was at its highest I was really surprised by the number of people who who again because because Vermont's such a liberal state. There were a lot of people who were like, well, everybody's got a right to speak. And that is, I think that's a weak liberal position. A strong liberal position would be, we're grown ups and we can tell the difference between someone who is trying to do damage mm -hmm. with their words <laughs> and who, someone who may succeed in doing damage <coughs> with their words yeah. and the right to express your opinions and thoughts. And yeah. I was really surprised the amount of people I saw coming down on the, well, anything goes. You can say whatever you want because we have freedom of speech. And I'm like, no, the freedom of speech just means the government can't come arrest you for what you're saying. But you don't get to not be held responsible for consequences of things that you're saying. And that, I think, is a nuance that, that people really need to, to grasp. And it's not an easy one because we're brought up with the tradition of, you know, uh, oh, you know, people could just say what they want and, and, you know, hate speeches. So tell us a little about where you're working now. And uh, we've had Dana Kaplan on. Rock star. Yes. And so what are you doing there? Living my best life. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Every day I wake up and I'm like, is it really? Can I have a light? A, 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 <laughs> actually, I get somewhat kind of worried sometimes that I'm like, I'm only 32. I found my peak. What am I going to do for the rest of my career? I'm doing exactly what I want to do right now. Um, but that's a problem for future Mara. Politics, Present Mara. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows what is <laughs> okay. out there. But right now, um, what I do is I'm the director of education. So I spend most of my time working on offering workshops and trainings and consultation to entities that work with youth in Vermont, helping to bring them up to speed on how to be more gender and sexuality inclusive. So a lot of work in schools, which is awesome. So and, cool. In the whole state or? All over the state. Uh -huh. I mean, there's definitely a concentration. Like, unsurprisingly, there's a concentration in Chittenden County. Mm -hmm. There's a fair amount in central Vermont. Um, but we really make an effort, especially when places that are a little more far flung ask for us, mm -hmm. we really make an effort to get there. So that's um, part of what I do is, you know, just kind of um, work with schools, not just training, but also kind of like, hey, we have a question. What would we do about this bathroom policy? What should we do about the dress code? And then other stuff, too. Do you feel like most most uh, <laughs> of the schools are, are open to having people come in and, or, or to have student LGBTQ groups in them? I think that most schools are, and there are a lot of really strong GSAs, and they're excellent for supporting kiddos in school. Um, and I think probably the thing that matters the most right now is for people to start thinking about the fact that elementary school is actually where the work needs to be done right now. High schools and middle schools in Vermont are really, they're getting there. Not in every single place, it's not perfect, there are lots of problems, there are some school districts that struggle more than others. But it's time to start explaining things to a younger age group. Yeah. So if you have one thing you want to tell us about outright or 
about uh, being in touch with you or you know anything you'd like to tell the audience Absolutely. before we go okay so I love to get questions about how to do a better job taking care of LGBTQ youth and most of that information is going to be relevant to grown-ups too so if you want to take care of LGBTQ grown-ups the one message I have is really that like it's a the basis of it is a gender issue there's a lot going on in gender that we don't understand and so we need to we need to work on that, and it's not easy. So if you're like, I don't even know where to start, my email is mara at outrightvt.org. And we'll put that up on the screen so you can see it flow by. So if you have any questions for Mara, please let her know. And thank you very much. This was really great. I'm glad you came. <laughs> thank you, Linda. <laughs> very good. All very right. nuanced. You were both very, very good. And she marched with us in the July Fourth right. Independence Day Parade. So. so now our trivia question. That lead story in Out in the Mountains, August 2000. So what did these three people do to get on the front page? Were they photographed? Well, Carolyn Conrad and K.P. Peterson may have been the first couple to be granted a civil union under Vermont's new law, mm -hmm. and T. Hunter Wilson might have been the justice of the peace who officiated for them. Remember I said there was a trick. <laughs> so on that note, shall we say good night? We shall. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Please and we'll come see back. you in two weeks. Please come back. And resist. Resist. <laughs>